Okay, so I'm gonna pick this thing up off the table finally and put it on the ground here, cleared out of space, which I think will work. Um, it's just getting a little hard to visualize the body lines when it's sitting up on the table, plus it's a little hard to reach everything. So I'm gonna pick it up and hopefully I can slide it over effortlessly and put it on the ground and see, uh, see the ride height. Okay, so there's the table. And there's the amphibian. You can kind of see in comparison how it is with another car size-wise. Yeah, just give you a view around it here. See where we're working with, where we're at. Doesn't look like much, but quite a lot of work to get to here. See, it's pretty stanced. So that's where we're at. And you need to basically start fabricating again. Weird looking thing, I guess. You'll definitely recognize it if you ever see it. And basically my goal now is to get this side paneling done in this front end, because this is not gonna float the way it is. So, gotta work that out. And yeah. I basically got some of the framing roughed out, basically just using some aluminum uh, rod and I kind of got the shape you can kind of see it. Sort of gives you the, the lines of it, which are super important um, because I got to start figuring that, how it's going to work. But I like it. I really like it so far. I think it's going to be pretty good. And I'm getting to the point where I can start finalizing this, but I changed plan again. Uh, got to be pretty open to this in the center. I welded all that in, but now I have to cut it out because what the plan is now, I'm going to have this piece removable this little square here so I can access the drive shaft and the front of the differential there so I can unbolt the differential and take it out through here. I was gonna do all this through a removable panel on the bottom, but I think it'll be a lot easier if I can do it from the top because that way I don't compromise the rigidity of the bottom of the boat because I'd like to have that a nice smooth bottom there. So, so I got it picked up and actually I, I didn't put it on the table completely. I ended up just uh, putting it on these stands, which is kind of handy because you can uh, work underneath it here and uh, actually get to finally see the bottom of this thing. So basically I can do some welding under here that needs to get done. Here's the axle tube, which you probably are interested in seeing, maybe. There's the swing arm, there's the differential, there's the rack and pinion steering. The differential needs its cover. Basically, this is going to be wet in here. It'll be open here on the ends. Here's the propeller shafts. You kind of see how all this is working in here now. Kind of cool. I don't know if anybody wants to see any of this stuff. So, we're going to get, uh, get doing something on here and uh, keep you updated. Okay, so I've made a little more progress on this build. We did uh, kind of did some ribbing down here on the bottom and put the keel part in. I think that's what it's called. It's just eighth inch uh, metal. And I also trimmed up here, trimmed this line here around here, kind of make way for the propellers to go in this area. I had uh, boxed this spot in. The drive shaft and the control arm are obviously out of there right now, but. You can see it's uh, enclosed and I still have to make the, uh, the top for it. And onto the front, so we got the lower part of the nose here. It's perfect. Gets a little complicated in here because I'll show you. Well, I'll try to show you. This is a radiator. It's got some cardboard on it to protect it and the sides are cut off or whatever. I was trying to use this actually on my 38 Dodge many years ago and then I can weld the ends on it no problem but it's going to mount about here and it's going to mount flat basically I'm going to expect the lower section here uh, to have openings I think and then a ramp going straight up to the radiator uh, that way water will obviously go in these holes here a little bit but I'm hoping it just flows back out. It goes to the radiator, you know, to cool it down a little bit, I guess, too. So it doesn't blow it out. Um, and then another ramp above the radiator 
and a fan on top of the radiator so the heat will kind of siphon through and go out the top and I'll make like some vent louvers or something on the top. A lot of complexity here. I kind of underestimated how much it would be in here because the, uh, there's a lot required to get all of that isolated um, because there's that it has to be watertight. Then there's another cavity underneath of that, um, which is going to have the fuel tank right in the front of the vehicle. That's a great idea. But anyways, <laughs> that's where it's going to be. Um, I'm thinking right in here, just something. But all this has to be removable. I got to be able to take the radiator out and I got to be able to take that fuel tank out. Um, not regularly, but they have to come be able to come out in case something starts leaking or needs repair. So I have to have this. The plan was to make a firewall uh, right kind of where the channel is here. Um, I don't know if you can see my hand. I can't see my hand right here. goes straight up. And that basically seals off the driver compartment from the nose of the vehicle. That way, you know, fuel vapors or whatever stay, stay in there. You can see there's the ramp for the uh, drive shaft container area is there. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole right straight through the frame, straight through here, put a piece of tubing that goes all along the internals of the frame down there for the radiator hose. That way the coolant from the water We'll cool down the aluminum there and hopefully help keep this thing cool under heavy loads. Um, a little bit of a pain in the ass to do that. I should have done it a long time ago because in the back here is where the hose has got to come out of to meet to the engine. And it's going to be a little tight. Lots to do. I'll keep you updated. Anyways. All right. I'm going to show you a little bit of the work on this radiator and as I'm doing it, because these are kind of mysterious things if you don't know exactly what they are made of or how they're made. And you kind of have to modify these quite often. So this is the way it is. Uh, basically, it's just got cardboard on there. I'm going to cut this and this, take these housings off and then just bend some more metal and put the put new caps on the end of it. And then I'm gonna change the side piece here to maybe have a mount. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut this off here. Looks like I had welded this at some point and it filled in the tube, so there's no reason for that to be there. I'll just cut it a little shorter. Okay, so I just cut down the radiator to the bare core. I cut the sides off of it. You can kind of see how it, uh, basically this needs a little protection and a mounting surface. So I made up these little L brackets, eighth inch, and basically just gonna weld right along there. Super, super important weld, because once you do that, then you put the cap on and the edge piece here, and if that thing in there leaks, then you got a problem, because you gotta cut it all apart again. So just gonna, uh, yeah, weld one on either side. Do the end pieces. Basically, made the side pieces, got those welded on, and uh, now I have like a mounting surface I can work with. And I just bent this thing up. This is uh, just one sixteenth. Um, you can see the inner core there and how it's welded at the ends. So, basically, this goes on here, same thing on the other side, and I'm going to uh, basically weld the edges 
and then make a cap for the corners and weld those on and uh, yeah as far as that is I'm just gonna stop at that because uh, I don't know exactly where the how this is mounting or where the hose ends need to be so we're not gonna do any of that yet So this thing's been welded like absolute crap. It's like super oxidized. I think I have to go over it twice. I'm not entirely sure why it's doing that, but. All right, so it's welded for the most part. Um, yeah, you can see welds are kind of crap. If you know about welding aluminum, that's not very nice, but I don't know, this stuff, is like super oxidized the radiator core part and it just was always ugly whenever it started to melt so um well with that side too i didn't put any of the fittings in it i don't know where they're supposed to be now we gotta mount it in here okay i've been working on this radiator mounting situation here for a few days now and I'm not getting anywhere. I got basically this thing mounted, bolted in. Kind of gonna mount that there, but I do not, I don't like how this is coming together here. And I don't think there's gonna be enough space. So we're gonna leave it at that for now. 